you like word games? All right, what's a 12-letter word starting with H that means a substance that induces hallucinations when taken orally? I give up. It's hallucinogen. H-A-L-L-U-C-I-N-O-G-E-N. Oh, just a minute. H-A-H-A-L-H-A-L-L. I don't find any such word in the dictionary. <laughs> no, and you won't unless you have the very latest dictionary. And even the dictionary definition doesn't tell us very much about hallucinogens. Something new and strange to most of us. They open the door to worlds most of us never knew existed. Sometimes quite wonderful, close to heaven. And sometimes a worse hell than any mad artist ever dreamed of. Theater 5 presents Dream of Death. five when I got out to the plant, and for some reason when I saw it, it scared me. It was new, all stainless steel, glass, and concrete, and quite large. But it had been built on the edge of an old residential section, tree-lined streets, frame, and brownstone houses that had once been friendly and charming. It was as if the plant was the future, cold, efficient, ruthless, and it was taking over. I found the research building and went in to keep my appointment with Dr. Dietrich. What do you think a hallucinogen is? Oh, a drug, usually an alkaloid that affects the mind. And gives one hallucinations? Oh, no, not necessarily. As I understand it, some of them do. LSD, for instance, actually induces schizophrenia temporarily, but most of them merely alter consciousness. Merely? Do you know what happens when you merely alter consciousness? You open the door to worlds most of us never knew existed before. Sometimes quite wonderful, <laughs> close to heaven, and sometimes a worse hell than any mad artist ever dreamed of. Mm, so I gather. These um, articles you're writing, they're just on the hallucinogens? No, at the moment, yes. And when I read that you and Dr. Fuller had developed a new synthetic out here... Well, uh, I'm afraid I can't give you any information on its composition. It's still in the experimental stage. We've finished our animal tests and we're well into our clinicals, but... Well, uh, if you could possibly let me look at some of your reports, descriptions of your subjects' actions, what they said, thought, and felt. Well, I... I suppose I could do that. On the other hand, you're quite imaginative. React easily to outside stimuli, don't you? <laughs> Why do you say that? Well, I was thinking that if you're sufficiently interested... Perhaps we could let you try one of the drugs we've been working on yourself. Try it? Oh, wouldn't that be the best way to describe its effects, if you actually experience them? Well, I suppose it would. I hadn't thought of it. The idea's a little frightening, but... All right, Doctor, if you're willing. Well, I think it can be arranged. I'll have to... Oh, I don't know. I... Oh, sorry. I didn't know you had anyone in here. Oh, it's all right. Alan Benson, Dr. Fuller. How do you do? How do you do? I'd like to talk to you, Arnold. If this is a bad time... Oh, I... it's a good time. Uh, will you excuse me, Mr. Benson? Oh, yes, of course. Then uh, you'll let me know? Yes, I have your phone number and I'll call you. I'd thought Dr. Fuller was angry when he came in, and I was sure of it a minute later when I heard a first-class argument going on behind the closed door of Dietrich's office. The other people, it's outrageous, and I won't stand for it. Oh? Well, that's just too bad, then, because there's not a thing you can do about it. It's a strange way for two men who work together to act, but it was none of my business. As I left, I made the unhappy discovery that it was raining, and then the happy discovery that Dr. Dietrich's secretary was waiting in the doorway. It seemed she lived only a few blocks away, and I had my car, so I offered her a lift. When it turned out that she lived alone, I suggested dinner, which turned out to be one of the best suggestions I ever made. Over martinis and dinner at a little restaurant, I told her about my writing and a book I was planning on the use of drugs in mental illness. Well, they've been doing some interesting work along those lines out here, particularly Dr. Fuller. Oh, not Dr. Dietrich? Not so much. 
And that's one of the things that annoys Dr. Dietrich. As head of the department, he has to spend more time on administrative work than research. I know he envies and resents Dr. Farr. Maybe it was the coziness of the restaurant on a cold, rainy night, but we were soon on a first-name basis. Sarah and Alan. And telling each other all about ourselves. She was working at the laboratory while studying for her master's degree in psychology and was interested in my research. When we left, we knew we'd see each other again. And it turned out to be sooner than I'd hoped. Dr. Dietrich called me the next day and told me to come to the lab that evening. Why, Atlas? Hi. You seem surprised to see me. Didn't uh, Dietrich tell you I was coming? No, he didn't. Well, he called me, said that he and Fuller were free this evening and that this might be a good time for me to take the drug. Take it? Yeah. Well, I didn't know you were actually going to take it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I am. Well, I don't imagine you'll still be here when I come up. Oh, no, no, I'll be leaving in a few minutes. Well, I, uh, I really did enjoy last night. And if I come through this in one piece... Oh, what do you mean, if? Well, I'm, I'm just playing it safe. Can I phone you tomorrow? Of course. I'd like that. like it very much. How do you feel now, Mr. Benson? Well, about the same, Dr. Fuller, only... <laughs> Did you do anything to the lights? No, why? Well, everything's brighter. Much brighter. Mm. And things are changing. Those uh, test tubes, for instance, they're not just moving now. They seem to be growing like, uh, well, glass flowers. What's hmm. the time? Seventeen minutes. It's reacting very quickly. You're sure you gave him only 20 milligrams? Of course. We'd better strap him down now. Uh, sit back, Mr. Yes. Benson. Uh, That's it. Uh, uh, we are. Uh, uh, those straps too tight, Mr. Benson? Mr. Benson? I heard him, but I couldn't answer. I was going backward in time. Back through the last few days, then through months and years. I was at college, in high school, and I was 12, and the old terror came over me again, because I knew what was going to happen next. Mr. Benson, Alan, can you hear me? Where are you? He seems to be at stage three already. Yes, he does. But he shouldn't have gotten there so fast, unless Arnold. Didn't give him number 37, did you? What if I did? But you fool, how could you? We haven't finished the control test yet. Besides, it's not yours, it's mine. Yes, it's, that's what you think. I was lying in bed, hearing them quarreling downstairs. He must have come home drunk again, and she was angry, and so was he. And now he was no, going to hit her the way he did sometimes. But this time, if he did... Stop that! Stop it, do you hear? Don't you dare hit her again. If you do, I'll kill you. I swear I will! You know what happens to little boys who talk that way to their stepfathers? They get locked in the cellar, like this. The cellar was dark, and I couldn't see him anymore. But that didn't matter, because I knew where he was. And I also knew he had turned into a monster from a horror picture. Crouching down, I felt something. A piece of pipe on the floor. Then, as he came at me, I hit out. <laughs> he was laughing, laughing at me. I kept swinging, hearing the jars of preserves on the shelves smashing. Then I tripped, started to fall down, down. When I came to, I was lying on the floor, and there was a length of pipe in my hand. I seemed to be in... Some kind of a laboratory that was turning around slowly. What was I doing in a laboratory? The last thing I remembered was a cellar. I got to my feet, feeling sick. Tried to make the room stop spinning. There were broken bottles and test tubes all over the place. And the smell of chemicals almost choked me. 
Then the hammering began. It was off somewhere, but it felt as if it were inside my head. It was too much. I blundered out through a door across the reception room, and then I was outside. What? Alan, what are you doing out here? Oh. Are you all right? I... I, I don't know who you are. It's Sarah. Sarah Dunn. Sarah? Oh. Yes, I, I remember her. She was that pretty girl. Pretty and nice. That I had dinner with. But, Alan, why are you talking about it so strangely? Because it, it, it happened so long ago. I always remembered her. I thought if I could just... Get out of that cellar. You don't know what you're saying, do you? Don't I? No. You're still under the influence of that drug. Drug? I remember something about that. Uh, there were two doctors. Yes, and they must be wondering where you've gone. Here, give me your arm. Uh, we'll go back in there. Well, uh, take me someplace where I can lie down until everything stops going around this way. Can you walk? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Especially if you help me. I'll help you. Come on. I'll take you back to my place. You feeling better now? Yeah, a little. Um, what are you doing? I'm calling the lab. I want to tell them you're here. Oh, Dr. Dietrich? Oh, well, this is Sarah Dunn, his secretary. Who's this? Please. Well, did something happen? Oh, that's impossible. I mean... Yes. 43 Calumet Road. Right. Anything wrong, Sarah? What makes you ask? Well, you look upset, and you said something about the police. Dr. Fuller's dead. Dead? Yes. And the police say you killed him. Here, Alan, drink this. Huh? What is it? Black coffee. Oh. Now, you don't recall actually hitting anyone? No, I seem to have gone back, way back to when I was a boy, locked in a cellar. I did slash at someone or something with that piece of pipe, but I, I don't remember hitting anything except... Well, I thought they were jars of preserves. Where did you get the piece of pipe? I found it on the cellar floor. Only you weren't in any cellar. You just thought you were. You were in the lab. And I don't know what a piece of pipe would be doing there on the floor or anywhere else. Was that what he was killed with? A piece of pipe? Oh, the policeman didn't say. But there's something else. Didn't they strap you down in a chair? Yeah. They usually do because sometimes the subjects become violent. But then, how did you get loose? Oh, I don't know. May I use your phone? Why? I want to call the police. They must be looking for me. And if I did kill Dr. Fuller... Yes, Fuller... if. And it's a big if. But if you did, I don't see how you can be blamed for it. After all, you were under the influence of the drugs. Sarah, that's got nothing to do with it. The police want me and... Shh. Just a second. Up the street there. Police car. Coming here. Oh, probably. They asked for my address when I phoned and they'd want to talk to me. Well, then, that's that. No, it's not. Now, you come on in here into the bedroom. Oh, now, look, Sarah. Please I... don't argue with me. There's no time for it. Now, go on out and hide back there in the garden until I call you. <laughs> practically pushed me out the window, closed it, and went back into the living room. I stood there in the night trying to think. What she was doing was wrong. I knew that. Because she was getting herself involved in this nightmare, too. But what could I do about it? Then the bell rang, and I heard her go to the door. Miss Dunn? Yes? I'm Morelli, 34th Precinct. Was it you I spoke to when I called the lab a little while ago? Yes, it was. Well, please, come in. They sat down on the far side of the living room, and from then on I couldn't hear anything. The officer stayed about 20 minutes. When he left, I opened the window, climbed back inside. 
Alan? What do you want? What we thought, to find out what I knew. He'd already talked to Dr. Dietrich, of course. Well, what did you tell him? Everything. Up to the time I left the office tonight. Well, didn't he ask whether you'd seen me after that? Yes. I'm afraid I lied about that. I said no. Why? Well, isn't that obvious? Because I don't think you did it. And if you didn't kill Fuller, there's only one person who could have, and that's Dr. Dietrich. Well, Sarah, that's impossible. Why? Oh, I can think of at least one good reason. I told you that he and Fuller didn't always work together. Now, suppose Fuller came up with something big and important, refused to share the credit with Dietrich. Or suppose Dietrich found out that he was going to leave and take his discovery with him, really cash in on now, it. Now, wait a minute. Of course. They were having a violent argument when I left yesterday. Couldn't it have been about that? I suppose so. Well, I'm sure of it. Because I seem to remember hearing Fuller tell Dietrich that he had no right to try the drug on me, that it was his, Fuller's, and... Where's Fuller's lab? Right next to Dr. Dietrich's. Why? That hammering I heard when I came to must have been in there. Oh. Well, Fuller kept most of his data in a locked file cabinet. That's probably where he'd keep the formula. And if he didn't have the key on him when he was killed... Dietrich would try and break it open. And that's how it sounded to me. You know, I'd like to take a look at that file cabinet, see what's in it. Well, I've got a key to the lab. And the police aren't going to stay there all night. If we went over there about two or three in the morning... We... Now, wait a minute, Sarah. Now, save your breath. I'm in on this, too, now. And I'm going over there with you. She woke me at about two. We slipped out of the house, walked over to the plant. I had a flashlight in my car. I took that and a jack handle. And we went inside, into Fuller's laboratory. The file cabinet's over here. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's still locked, but someone's been working on it. There are dents all around the lock. Can you open it? Yeah, I think so. Here, uh, hold the flash. All right. Ah, there we are. Now, how would it be filed? Well, they called it polytran. Uh-huh. And the last formula they worked on together was number 23. Oh? Well, here's 24, and so on, up to number 37. Let's take a look at that. All right. Well... Yeah, this could be it. Look, here's an envelope with a notarized statement attached. On this day, Dr. Mark Fuller sealed this envelope in my presence. Put your and... hands up, please, both of you. Dr. Dietrich. I'll take that envelope, Benson. Throw it to me. Well, thanks. Why are you looking at me that way, Miss Dunn? Because I still can't believe that you'd do such a thing. You're talking about Fuller? Yes, it was unfortunate. If the formula proves as valuable as I hope, there would have been more than enough in it for both of us. But he wanted to keep it all for himself, so... So you killed him. As I said, it was unfortunate. But what's even more unfortunate is that you didn't leave things alone, Benson. You never would have been indicted for the killing. I'd have testified for you. Explained that you'd done it while under the influence of the drug. Now, of course, I'll have to kill you, too. Uh-uh, you'll never get away with it, Dietrich. Would I? I came back to the lab, suspecting you might return here, and you had. You were still under the drug's influence, violent, homicidal. You attacked me, and I killed you in self-defense. And what about me? That's no great problem, Miss Dunn. Mr. Benson killed you under the influence of the drug, of course. Your body will be found right here next to his. <laughs> After all, they can try me for only one murder. And if I let you go, they're bound to get me for Fuller, so... I'll take that gun, Doctor. Up, Morelli. That's right. I said I'd take that gun. Okay. Get over there against the wall. Officer, I don't think I've ever been so glad to see anyone in my life. Only what brought you over here? Well, you did. I had a feeling you weren't telling me everything you knew when I was over at your place. So I kept an eye on it. When you and Benson left to come over here, I followed you. Well, then... You heard what Dr. Dietrich said. I heard. And it explains a lot of things that didn't make sense before. Well, you're in the clear now, Benson. You're a very lucky guy. Oh, you think so? What do you mean? How would you like to have thought for quite a few hours that you were a murderer? You see, Lieutenant, I believed I was. <laughs> The 
Theater 5 has presented Dream of Death, written by Robert Newman and directed by Warren Somerville. In the cast, William Redfield, Gertrude Warner, Guy Sorrell, and William Griffiths. Audio engineer Bill Sandreuter, sound technician Ed Blaney. Script editor Jack C. Wilson. Original music by Alexander Vlastatsenko. Orchestra under the direction of Glenn Osser. Executive producer for Theater 5, Edward A. Byron. We invite your comments. Write to Theater 5, New York 23, New York. This is Fred Foy speaking. This has been an ABC Radio Network production.